Hi, my name is Ranveer Chandra. I am the chief scientist of Azure Global at Microsoft. Today, I will talk about a project, Project FarmBeats, that I started at Microsoft Research in 2015. The goal of the FarmBeats project is to help address the world's food problem. That is, how do you grow more food to feed the growing population of the, of the world, and not just grow more food, grow good food, nutritious food, without harming the environment. One approach to achieve this goal is data-driven agriculture. That is, if we can map farms for soil moisture, soil temperature, soil nutrients, etc., it can help enable precision agriculture. And precision agriculture has been shown to improve yields, reduce costs, and is also better for the environment. For example, if you had a map like this, say for soil moisture, you could apply water only where it is needed. You could say you could apply nutrients only where it is needed, and that will help you use less water and save cost, and it's also better for the environment. In fact, if we can get data from the farms, it can help us do a lot more. It can help us connect farms better, do AI-based AI advisories, grow livestock better. The thing is, even though the benefits of data-driven agriculture and precision agriculture have been well known, precision agriculture hasn't been widely adopted. And the biggest reason why this hasn't been adopted is the cost of existing data-driven agriculture techniques. The goal of the FarmBeats project when we started it was to significantly bring down the cost of these data-driven agriculture solutions to make them affordable for growers worldwide. And I'll talk about a few of the innovations that we've come up with to make the systems more affordable. One of the biggest reasons existing solutions are so expensive is because of connectivity in the farm. That is, even though sometimes connectivity might exist when you plant the seeds, by the time the crops grow, the connectivity is gone. To address this problem, we are using a technology that I personally have been working on since 2005 called the TV White Spaces. What the TV White Spaces enables is imagine if you have a Wi-Fi-like device that you can access several miles away. That would be cool, right? And the way we do that is by embedding these Wi-Fi signals in empty TV channels. These channels have excellent propagation characteristics and most of them are vacant in rural areas. And this, these channels are over the air TV channels, the TV you watch using antennas. When you browse through TV on certain channels, you get a transmission. On the other channels, all you see is white noise. We built a technology using which you could put Wi-Fi signals in these empty TV channels in a way that doesn't interfere with your TV reception in an adjacent channel. And the key thing about TV channels is that TV towers are in cities. In a farm, most of these TV channels are just white and noisy. And the more empty TV channels there are, the more unused spectrum there is, the more capacity there is to send and receive data. Our vision is just like Wi-Fi connects your house, this TV white space spectrum can be used to connect your entire farm. Another challenge is how do you accurately generate these kind of precision maps? Say, suppose the question was, what is the soil moisture level six inches below the soil throughout the farm? If you have to generate an accurate soil moisture level, you would need a sensor every 10 meters. But putting a sensor every 10 meters is expensive to deploy, to manage. It will come in the way of the farmer as the farmer does the day-to-day job. To address this challenge in farm beats, we use artificial intelligence techniques to combine sensor data with aerial imagery from drones and satellites. So we train the model on regions where there are sensors and there is aerial imagery. And then we use that trained model to predict these sensor values in other regions of the farm. And we, when in research, we did this for soil temperature, soil pH, and soil moisture. And we wrote a research paper in which we showed that this technique of combining ground sensor data with aerial imagery 
is three times more accurate than existing schemes for interpolating data that primarily rely on Craig's method or just using one modality. However, one of the key challenges when using um, uh, drone imagery or, or, is that, or even satellite imagery is that a significant portion of satellite imagery is cloudy. At any instant in time, more than 77% of the satellite imagery have clouds in them. Current techniques typically identify the cloudy areas and discard that imagery which have clouds in them. At research, we have invented a new technique that combines optical images from satellites with radar data from SAR satellites and using that, we are able to reconstruct the imagery below the clouds, not just, op, not just RGB, but multispectral imagery as well. And our technique, which we call SpaceEye, can reconstruct these scenes below the clouds with over 85% accuracy for all the bands. And we can not only see farms under stress below the clouds, but also ships that come and go in the port of Seattle and construction sites that come up even below the clouds. The third challenge is that of connectivity to the cloud. I talked about how using the TV white spaces, we can send large amounts of data from the farm to the farmer's house, but the connectivity from the farmer's house to the cloud is weak. Many farmers, they pay for broadband, but all they get is one to three megabits per second connectivity. While in one single drone flight, you can generate a few gigabytes of data. So the question then is if you can capture large amounts of data and send it to the farmer's house, but can't send it to the cloud, how can we bring the benefits of this data to the farmer? To address this challenge, our key insight was that most farmers have PCs. If they don't have a PC, we ship them a PC form factor device. This device sits in the farmer's house or office. It's a PC and it does a lot of compute in the farmer's house or office. It gets the data, say from drones, it does this computer vision based stitching, 3D point cloud generation. It gets data from cameras, does AI machine learning on the edge. And then it sends the summaries to the cloud, where in the cloud we merge it with other data streams. For example, from satellite data, weather data, and other data sources, and based on which you can generate advisories for the growers. Of course, this project was in research for a long period of time, and we've done several deployments from 2015 to 2018 in various parts of the world, anywhere from half an acre to 9,000 acres. And these are just some examples of how the growers are using FarmBeats. We deployed, one of the things we do with FarmBeats is when we, once you deploy a sensor, we not only tell you what the sensor values are right now, but we can make predictions of what these values for the sensor values would look like up to five days in advance. And if you see the figure on the right, the red bars there show that the error is less than 10%. This prediction is based on data, weather station data, and then based on the weather station data, we've trained the models. And then when you put a sensor in the farm, we do transfer learning to start making very hyper-local decisions about what the, what the weather will be in the farm itself. On the bottom left, you're seeing a testimonial from one of the farmers in Eastern Washington who used our system, who was looking to go spray in the farm. The weather station said it would be 40 degrees plus. It was, we said it would be 31 degrees and it was actually 30 degrees. It was below freezing and it was good that the grower, the farmer in this case, did not go and spray in the farm. This is another use case. This is a four kilometer stretch. The farmer wanted to know how his cows are doing once they were out in pasture. We flew the drone, we transmitted the data over the white spaces to an edge device. And within 30 minutes, we were able to flag things like from left to right, the grass is growing back well, the cows are pooping well, which is also important information for the farmer. This is deep learning on cow poop. This is where the cows are. This is a stray cow that needs to be herded in all of this within 30 minutes of flying the drone. This is another use case. This is from a small farm close to Microsoft campus, about 25 miles east of Microsoft campus. We do a lot of demos here. Bill Gates had visited this farm too in 2018 and he blogged about farm beats and Gates notes. We show the farmer these beautiful pictures overlaid with data. For example, we were able to flag that the bottom left part of the farm is still moist, even though we did not have a sensor over there. This is a pH map 
where after the farmer had applied lime, we were able to flag that the dark parts of the farm are still acidic. The farmer needs to reapply lime before planting the seeds. This is a barn where we had multiple uh, cameras streaming data. We were able to see if the cows are moving well, whether a cow is sick and flag that information to the grower. So this was all in research. And then I moved over to the product team and we worked, we set up an engineering team and we worked with the engineering team to move parts of the research I talked about. All of it will take time, but some parts of it into a product. Last November, we announced FarmBeats uh, as a product, as it's in preview right now in Azure Marketplace. You can go and install it. FarmBeats runs in the customer's Azure subscription. So we don't get any access to the data. In this slide, everything in blue you see is Azure. Everything in green is what we are building with FarmBeats. And in yellow is what is built by partners. The FarmBeats data hub aggregates all the data from the farm sensors with sensor companies, drones, satellites, weather stations, et cetera, in one place. And Data Hub then is integrated with Azure Notebooks, so makes it easy for anyone, any machine learning person, to start adding new algorithms on top. And then our partners and ISVs can then add features on top of FarmBeats to build solutions for the growers. We've, of course, announced many partnerships. Most recently, we announced a weather partnership with DTN, sensor partnerships with Davis Instruments and Pessel Instruments. And overall, we, we also announced partnerships with Lando Lakes and PepsiCo, where with Lando Lakes, we are, they are building these solutions on top to the, and taking FarmBeats based solutions to the growers. That said, we are continuing to invest in research to further drive down the cost of sensing. Existing soil sensors, for example, cost a few hundred dollars for soil moisture or, uh, or soil electrical conductivity. And at a few hundred dollars, they are still out of reach of many smallholder farmers. However, most of these farmers still have a smartphone, even if all they have is an inexpensive smartphone. That, even if it has an inexpensive smartphone, it has a Wi-Fi chipset in it. The interesting insight we had is that the time of flight of a Wi-Fi signal depends on the permittivity of the material. So in this case, if the soil is moist, the signal will take longer to go the same distance. However, this time is in nanoseconds. So our key insight was that the way to measure that nanoseconds time is by instead of measuring the accurate time of flight, if, if we absolute time of flight, if we can measure the relative time of flight, because these Wi-Fi chipsets have multiple antennas, we can then estimate soil moisture and soil electrical conductivity. We wrote the first paper on this technique and published it last year, and this received an award at a top tier computer science conference. And with this and other techniques, we are envisioning a future in which sensing is democratized and a farmer anywhere can just bring his or her phone close to soil and get the information about the soil and what treatment is needed in the, in this, in the farm. In another work, we are building 3D simulations of the farm. That is, gathering data from farms around the world is cumbersome, both for collecting data for the machine learning model, as well as to evaluate the efficiency of the model. What we are doing here is we are building a simulation framework to model any farm anywhere in the world. You can change the crop height, crop spacing, crop stress. Once you do that, you can actually go and fly a drone in the farm, and then you can transmit this data to the farm, you can change the weather conditions. And once you've flown the drone, you can then send it through the FarmBeats pipeline to get data to train your machine learning model, as well as to test it for different farms. So I talked about some of the research we are doing and some of the products we build. I wanted to conclude by talking about some of the work we are doing on societal impact. Through the AI for Earth program, we give out grants to organizations that are using artificial intelligence to address some of the key problems around agriculture, water, biodiversity, and climate change. Through the Airband Initiative, we are using technologies such as TV white spaces to bring broadband to rural America. We've made a pledge to connect 3 million rural Americans to broadband in the US by 2022. Through the TechSpark program, we are, uh, this is part of Microsoft Philanthropies, we are investing in skilling the rural population looking at bringing digital education to bridge the skill gap. For example, we've created a FarmBeat student kit that we are giving out to the FFA, the Future Farmers of America, and helping, the, helping them shape the curriculum with a vision that in the future, all the future farmers 
will be trained on data, on AI, on machine learning, so that they can then start applying the latest in technology to their agricultural practices. Of course, we are taking a comprehensive look, but there are many hard problems, and we would love to work with you on addressing some of them as we take the world towards a future in which agriculture is data-driven and not driven as much by guesswork. Thank you.